Welcome to the course on green technologies for African micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Today, we will cover the second of the six modules in this course. The focus of this lecture is on the opportunities of green technologies for African businesses. This module has three objectives. First, the module will discuss the drivers and constraints that influence green technology adoption. We will illustrate this point using results from a recent survey of African small businesses. The second objective of the module is to provide a breakdown of sustainability policies. Among others, we will discuss the difference between regulatory and market-based policies and between adaptation and mitigation policies. Finally, we will discuss types of innovations. The last part of the lecture will elaborate the Japanese concept of Kaizen as an example of incremental process innovation. Let's start by looking at the drivers of green technology adoption. Firms will adopt green technologies for various reasons. Some firms could develop or adopt green technologies because of economic reasons. Given rising public concern to climate change and important policy changes, there are many economic benefits from adopting green technologies. For example, green technologies can increase business growth and diversification, create reputational benefits, improve customer relationships, and build employee motivation. Other firms adopt green technologies because of intrinsic and ethical reasons. For example, entrepreneurs could be motivated by altruism or the need to do the right thing. They could also be motivated by the belief that becoming sustainable is the right thing to do. Other ethical motivations include passion about sustainability, concern about affected communities, and the desire to utilize their capabilities. This figure shows the drivers of green technology adoption based on a survey of 20 African small businesses, which was conducted in October, 2022. The figure shows that green technology adoption is driven by both economic and ethical factors. Important ethical drivers are care about the environment, the desire to use knowledge and skill for the greater good, and a sense of purpose among entrepreneurs. Important economic drivers are improving customer relationships and potential business growth. There are two types of barriers that inhibit the ability of businesses to adopt green technologies. These are internal barriers and external barriers. Internal barriers are related to different organizational constraints that make it difficult to employ new green technologies. For example, there could be lack of managerial focus on sustainability in some businesses. Some businesses could lack the capacity to develop or commercialize green technologies. High upfront costs of green technologies 
combined with limited financial resources can also limit the adoption of green technologies. Businesses can also fail to adopt green technologies due to external barriers such as lack of government support, an uncertain market environment, policy uncertainty, high competition, and lack of access to finance or new technologies. This figure shows the barriers of green technology adoption among 25 African small businesses based on a survey conducted in October 2022. Barriers of green technology adoption include both external and internal factors. Important external barriers are lack of external finance, difficulty to assess technologies, and lack of government support. Important internal barriers are limited resources, lack of technology, commercialization, and development capacity, and the high upfront cost of technologies. Let's now turn to policy instruments that governments use to encourage the adoptions of green technologies. Governments have a wide array of policy tools for encouraging green technologies and sustainability in general. The UNDP recently implemented a large survey covering more than 1.2 million respondents from around the world. The survey identified the most popular sustainability policies in the world, as well as in Africa. Globally, as well as in Africa, the four most important sustainability policies are the following. Conservation of forest and land, use of solar, wind, and renewable energy, use of climate-friendly farming techniques, and investments in green businesses and jobs. Broadly speaking, we can group sustainability policies into two camps, mitigation policies and adaptation policies. As you can see on the figure, these policies sometimes overlap. Mitigation policies try to reduce the likelihood and severity of climate change by preventing or reducing greenhouse gas, GHG, emissions. Adaptation policies try to prevent or minimize the damage caused by climate change or to take advantage of opportunities that may arise. Mitigation policies include market-based and non-market policy instruments. Market-based policy instruments try to correct market failures that lead to unsustainable production and consumption by getting the prices right. Among others, these include the following. Carbon taxes, emission trading systems, emission credit systems, renewable energy subsidies, removal of subsidies on fossil fuels, etc. Non-market policy instruments mainly include regulatory measures such as emission standards, technology support, green public procurement, etc. Climate change adaptation policies mainly include risk mitigation measures that try to improve resilience to climate change related hazards and disasters. For example, there are different adaptation funds to support communities 
affected by climate change. Another example of adaptation policies is agricultural policy to create climate resilient crop varieties and other technologies. Generic climate policies are standard policies that also facilitate a sustainable and green economy. These include policies that encourage innovation and labor or product market policies that facilitate competition. African countries have varying levels of commitment to climate policy. Some countries have legally endorsed the Paris Agreement, while others have not. Nigeria is one of the countries that have adopted a climate change law that is broadly in line with the Paris Agreement. In 2021, President Buhari signed into a regulation that sought to achieve net zero GHG emissions around the year 2060. Nigeria's climate law is implemented by National Council on Climate Change that is headed by the president. The council coordinates national climate policymaking and mobilizes resources to facilitate climate transition. Let's now take a moment to reflect on the nature of climate policy in your own country. What policy measures has your government taken toward climate change? How can you take advantage of these opportunities to implement green innovation? How can green technologies contribute to mitigating climate change? The environmental impact equation can help us answer this question. The equation shows the level of environmental impact of a country indicated by the letter I is equal to the product of three factors. The country's population indicated by the letter P. The country's affluence or income per capita indicated by the letter A. The country's level of technology indicated by the letter T. The higher the population and affluence of a country, the greater the level of environmental impact. The lower the technology of a country, the lower the level of environmental impact. When we apply the IPAT equation to Africa, it is evident that Africa's environmental impact is low When we apply the IPAT equation to Africa, it is evident that Africa's environmental impact is low due to a low level of affluence in the continent. Given Africa's growing economy and expanding population, however, this will change rapidly. Going forward, Green technology will be critical to offset Africa's increasing environmental impact. Let's now turn to the general topic of innovation. Innovation is the process of translating an idea into an original product of service that satisfies a specific consumer need 
please use the QR code or website link on the right side of the slide to watch a short YouTube video on different types of innovations. This diagram identifies four types of innovations based on two criteria. The horizontal axis shows the level of newness of the technology. The vertical axis shows the level of impact the innovation has on the market. Incremental and architectural innovations are innovations that do not involve highly new technologies. In other words, these innovations provide new products or processing using existing or slightly adapted technologies. Examples of adaptations of existing products, such as a different models of iPhone or iPad. Radical and disrupted innovations, however, are based on significant advancement in new technologies. Radical innovation occurs when a radically new technology affects or an existing marketing. Radical innovation occurs when a radically new technology affects an existing market. Examples are electric cars that are replacing gasoline or diesel cars in the market. Disrupted innovations occur when a radically new technology creates an entirely new market. Examples are cryptocurrencies or social network sites. The rest of this lecture will discuss in greater detail the concept of Kaizen, which is a type of incremental innovation. Kaizen is an interesting type of innovation that is easy to implement in Africa and can yield significant sustainability benefits. The word Kaizen is composed of two Japanese words that can be translated as good change. However, Kaizen can be better understood as a process of continuous improvement. It is a strategy where employees at all levels of the company work together proactively to achieve regular incremental improvements in production or service delivery processes. Kaizen is an umbrella concept that covers many Japanese management practices. It is a process-focused philosophy of continual improvement and implementation. The goal of Kaizen is creating an organizational culture of ongoing change and improvement. Kaizen can be implemented by any individual worker, a small team, or a large team. It can also be implemented through a series of short-term blitzes or through a gradual long-term approach. As shown in the figure, Kaizen has the following distinguishing characteristics. Kaizen is part participatory. As shown in the figure, Kaizen has the following distinguishing characteristics. Kaizen is participatory because it involves all workers from top management to frontline workers. Kaizen is continuous because it involves small but daily efforts. 
it is scientific because its implementation involves measurement and data. Kaizen is economical because it seeks to improve efficiency As shown in the figure, Kaizen has the following distinguishing characteristics. Kaizen is participatory because it involves all workers from top management to frontline workers. Kaizen is continuous because it involves small but daily efforts. It is scientific because its implementation involves measurement and data. Kaizen is economical because it seeks to improve efficiency and reduce waste. As shown in the figure, Kaizen has the following distinguishing characteristics. Kaizen is participatory because it involves all workers from top management to frontline workers. Kaizen is continuous because it involves small but daily efforts. It is scientific because its implementation involves measurement and data. Kaizen is economical because it seeks to improve efficiency and reduce waste. Finally, Kaizen is universal because it can be applied at all times in different countries and industries. Kaizen improves the quality of products and services, enhances staff motivation, creates a culture of teamwork, and creates a safe work environment. As a result, businesses that pursue Kaizen can build robust capabilities that improve their competitiveness and sustainability performance. Kaizen has been implemented in a number of countries in Africa. In 2009, the Japan International Cooperation Agency introduced Kaizen for the first time in Ethiopia. Two years later, the Ethiopian Kaizen Institute was established. The Institute has trained hundreds of Kaizen consultants who are now providing Kaizen training to local businesses. The following are some of the key principles of Kaizen being open to new ideas instead of fixating with old ideas, creating a culture of mutual respect, teamwork, and open communication, ensuring that every individual is an asset to the company, acting on available solutions instead of waiting for perfection. The following are some of the key principles of Kaizen. One, being open to new ideas instead of fixating with old ideas. Two, creating a culture of mutual respect, teamwork, and open communication. Three, ensuring that every individual is an asset to the company. Four, acting on available solutions instead of waiting for perfection. Five, correcting mistakes as soon as they are found. Six, using thinking instead of money to solve problems. And seven, using data for making decisions and for monitoring progress. Kaizen involves making incremental productivity improvements. As shown in the figure to the top left of the slide, in an ideal world, 
productivity improvements happen smoothly over time. Under Kaizen, productivity improvements happen in small incremental steps. These gains could be eroded over time if workers revert back to old practices as shown in the figure at the bottom. Therefore, an important part of Kaizen is steady maintenance job to ensure that past improvements are preserved and reinforced. Please use the provided QR code or website link to watch a short YouTube video about Kaizen. The video explains how small scale changes through Kaizen enable large cumulative productivity growth in the Japanese automobile industry.